Today I'm going to be showing you a full tutorial on how to get Windows games running through Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 via crossover. And this is a new method which basically allows us to run AVX games which previously were incompatible. Games like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which is a Windows Direct X12 game which has an AVX CPU requirement. And this basically meant that previous versions of crossover and Game Porting Toolkit couldn't actually run this game. However, with the advent of Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 beta and the fact that AVX and AVX2 requirements have been patched into macOS Sequoia, the new version of macOS 15. This means that games like this can basically run almost flawlessly on the Apple Silicon Mac. So today I'm going to show you a full tutorial on how to get this to work. It's a little bit convoluted because if you want to play AVX games, then you need to be running macOS Sequoia. And I never recommend installing a new beta version of macOS on a main production machine. So therefore, we're going to be showing you how to actually install macOS Sequoia kind of as a dual boot on an external solid state drive. This of course is not the only way to do it. If you wanted to upgrade straight into macOS Sequoia on your internal drive, you can do that too. There are also options to dual boot internally as well, but I'm going to be using the external method. Once macOS Sequoia is installed, I'm going to be showing you how to modify crossover in order to get Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 files into there. I'm going to be showing you two methods. One is going to be using CX Patcher. The other is going to be the official Apple file replacement method. And hopefully this is going to allow you to run various Windows games that have previously required AVX to run as well as possible on the Apple Silicon Mac. So first things first, we're going to be installing macOS Sequoia on this external Anker SSD. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for a tutorial on how to construct one of these if you wanted to. And today I'm going to show you how to dual boot this because I've got macOS Sonoma here and I want to be able to basically install and play around with the new macOS Sequoia without affecting the internal drive. So installing it externally is quite a good idea. And I've attached it to my Mac. I'm going to allow connection to this SSD. Next as well, we're going to make sure that we have our disk utility and we have the solid state drive, which needs to be empty of any data. So if you have any data, just be aware that you basically need to make sure that anything that we have here is going to be deleted. What I'm going to do is open up disk utility and then select my external solid state drive, which is a two terabyte drive here. I am going to just wipe this as well. So I'm going to go to erase and we're going to make this into an APFS drive and we're going to call this one Sequoia. So here I'm going to press erase and then that's going to basically start that process of erasing. It might take a few minutes, but now it's done, we're going to press done. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for Mr. Macintosh's blog page here. And this is a great place to download macOS Sequoia installers. So what we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to find the latest version 15.0 beta and just click on the install assistant.pkg. If for whatever reason this doesn't download, you can always control click and then click open a new tab and that often downloads better for you. So I'm gonna wait for this to complete before we move on to the next step. So next we go to our downloads folder and the finder and then double click on the install assistant.pkg, then open this up and then click the install button. So it's not really installing anything. All it's doing is that's gonna extract this into the applications folder. So once that's done, we'll press close and then press keep. Then within our applications folder, if we scroll down, we're gonna find the install macOS 15 beta. So what we're gonna do is run this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press continue here and then agree and agree again. And then the option by default is to install it into the internal drive. However, I have my macOS Sequoia SSD, which I formatted and I have ready to go. So this is gonna be installed externally instead of internally. And that means that we can dual boot both drives quite easily. So I'm gonna press continue here, and then I'm gonna set myself as the user. So it's gonna copy all of our user settings and type in our password into this window, press unlock. And now it's started that installation process. So you just wanna kind of let that finish. Might take quite a bit of time for that to complete. So here you can see now we've booted in from the SSD running macOS Sequoia, and we're gonna go ahead and log in to our account. So we need to go ahead and basically complete the entire setup process. And we're gonna continue here. We're not gonna do any migration. We'll set up our Apple account later. Agree, agree. I'm going to set up a local administrator account for my own user on my internal SSD. Type in your password. And basically we do the normal Mac setup until we can see the Mac desktop and then we're done. So the first step is going to be to download Crossover. So what I recommend doing is clicking at the link at the top of this video's description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. Once you're taken to the purchase page, you'll be able to enter this promo code, Apple Gaming Wiki New. And once you press the arrow button here, it's going to go ahead and apply a 20% off discount, which is pretty huge, off Crossover Plus, which is the version that we recommend for 12 months of support. However, if you want to make sure that this works for you, make sure to check out the 14 
day free trial, which is what I'm going to be trialing today. Just click this try now button and then scroll down. And all we need to do is enter our email address and name and then click the download trial now button. So once crossover is downloaded, we're going to copy it over to our applications folder and then we're going to double click to open it for the first time. Press open. It might ask you to install Rosetta 2, just let that install. And then we're going to do the free trial or if you have unlocked this already, you can enter your details here from the Code Weavers account. So I'm going to try now to start the 14 day free trial. And basically we're ready to go ahead and use crossover. But the first thing I'm going to do is to quit out and we're going to make the modifications to crossover. So there's basically two options to do this. What I call the easy way is to use CX Patcher, which I'm going to show you how to do now. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for CX Patcher, which has just been updated with the importing toolkit 2.0. If I go to releases here, then we can find the version that's just been released with new cache tools and game porting toolkit 2.0 beta one. So I'm going to download the CX Patcher here, click allow. And then within the downloads folder, we can move this to the applications folder and then double click on CX Patcher. And if this doesn't open, we can control click and then press open. And if we can't do that, then we need to go to our settings and then go to security and privacy. And then we need to scroll down and then we can press this open anyway button. And this will basically allow us to open up applications which aren't from the app store, type in your password, press OK. So just be aware that, of course, this is not a supported method of patching crossover. This really comes at your own risk. Do not ask Code Weavers for support or refund if you're using this method. They will not be able to help you. If you need help from Code Weavers, then you should be waiting for official support, which is probably going to come in the very near future. If you want to be able to use this, you need to type in this full phrase and then press agree and proceed. Then what we're going to do is go to advanced options within CX Patcher and just modify some of these things. We have the various patches, which improves Molten VK, D3D Metal 2.0 Beta. We have separate bottle paths, remove signature, etc. So basically going to leave all of these turned on. And then what we need to do with CX Patcher is we need to grab our crossover and then copy it over here and then it's going to successfully patch. So basically what I like to do at this stage is I like to call this one and rename it CX Patcher and then we have this original version as well. So we've got the original and the CX Patcher version. So if I double click on CX Patcher now uh, with the crossover and then don't check automatically when continue the free trial, we can use this as normal now. So basically games that we launched through here are going to be as normal through the normal crossover setup process. Not only is CX Patcher very user friendly, it uh, also has the ability to download GStreamer as well. This will allow several other games which use various codecs to actually work as well, including games like the Windows version of Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 7, other games to work too. So this is a pretty handy thing to install as well recommend doing the GStreamer update so that various games which rely on video codecs also work as well. And generally it's just much easier to use CX Patcher as well. A lot more people will be using identical versions. So definitely recommend using the GStreamer using CX Patcher as well. So I'm also going to show an alternate method of doing this without CX Patcher using the official Apple manual method. If you want to skip straight to the next Steam setup process, it's the same for the manual method and the CX Patcher crossover method. Just skip over using the timestamps. So if you want to do the official manual method, then you, we need to download Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 Beta officially from the Apple developer website. You don't need a developer account to do this. You can use any Apple ID and it's completely free to do. And I'm going to show you how to do this now. Okay, so here what we're going to do is to sign in with our Apple ID. So I've created one here. Then we're going to type in our password. We're going to allow two-factor authentication to log us in. And then we're going to press the continue button. I'm going to trust this browser, save the password. And then we need to agree to the Apple developer agreement. So this is completely free to do. I'm going to check the box and press no here and then press submit. So now our developer account is ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is go to develop this section here. Go to downloads. So we want to switch over to more and then we want to search for game porting toolkit. And then we have game porting toolkit here. So we can go ahead and do a download. You don't need to do the evaluation environment. The simplest one is the straight game porting toolkit beta DMG. Click the allow button and now we're downloading the beta one DMG. So once that's downloaded, we're going to go to the downloads folder. We're going to double click on game porting toolkit. And then the most important thing here is this evaluation environment. So double click on that. Agree. Once that opens, we have our files here. So I'm just going to look at this through Finder because I find that a little bit easier. Under evaluation environment, we're going to expand this redistributable library and then external. And these are the two files that we want to copy. So I'm going to select both of these and then control click and press copy. And then we're going to move them into our crossover application. So we're going to go to crossover that we've just downloaded. Then what we're going to do is control click on this, click on show package contents, and then expand this content section, go to shared support, go to crossover. And then we want to 
go to lib64 and then apple gptk and then expand external and the easiest way here is to basically double click on externals so that we only see this folder and then we're going to control click and press paste to items then we're going to overwrite both of these items within crossover so click replace and replace and then those two items have now been replaced completely so within our downloads i'm going to move this over to the applications folder and then this is our crossover. So what I'm gonna do now is show you the basic Steam setup process. So basically we're gonna be using the crossover CX patcher here. We're gonna open up the trial again. What we're gonna do is do a standard installation of Steam. So I'm gonna press the install button here. We're gonna click on the Steam icon here. Then we're gonna install Steam. Here it's gonna pop up about font installation, press yes. It's gonna handle the rest in the background, that's fine. So all of that stuff's happening in the background. So just let that finish. Now we're ready to go. We're gonna set up the Windows version of Steam here, just press install. At this stage, once it's finished, I do recommend turning this off and clicking the finish button. That'll help finish the creating the entire bottle. Then what I'm gonna do is turn on D3D Metal and M-Sync. So reboot bottle and enable M-Sync. This is gonna be the most relevant setting for most games. We're gonna launch this. I'm gonna press run with options and then I'm gonna enable the Metal Performance HUD. Then we're gonna double click on Steam here. Here it's saying it's updating. It's downloading this, which is pretty standard. Here we're gonna press allow and allow to allow access for Steam to access various files. So it might take a little bit of time for this to load up for the first time, but you just go ahead and log in with your Steam account or create a new one here or sign in with your smartphone using Steam Guard. That's what I'm going to do here. Just going to scan the QR code with my phone and then go ahead and sign in. So this is allowing us to sign in. Press allow for any extra file permissions. Press allow here. Now it's loading up our data. So now our Steam account is open. We can go ahead and download a lot of Windows games through here using macOS Sequoia. And we can also get games working here too. So here we're going to be testing out Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which is a game which does require AVX. So I've gone ahead and downloaded this and given us this error message saying no install graphics card, but we do have a graphics card we're going to press ok here we're going to just tweak some settings i'm just going to turn the preset onto medium so we could just test this out and run this at 1080p press play and now we have the game ratchet and clank running on apple silicon mac so personally i think that this looks pretty incredible there are barely any stutters on my macbook pro it's running at 1080p medium settings and it has all of these cpu requirements that it needs including avx this is of course a direct x12 running through three translation layers including windows to mac DirectX 12 to Metal, and it's also an Intel binary being translated through Rosetta 2. The game also works great on a controller, so I'm using an Xbox Series controller paired up via Bluetooth on the macOS side, and the game here has picked it up flawlessly. Anyway, we're still in really early days of new AVX games being run through Gameporting Toolkit 2.0 beta. If you discover any new games, then please make sure to leave a comment. There's lots of development work happening on the Apple Gaming Wiki Discord, so please check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.